Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Spring Hill Baptist Church Wednesday evening Bible study. And Brother Don, and it's good to be with you this evening. And I'm here in uh, here in my study in the holy place here at my house. I still uh, still kind of under the weather. Uh, as I posted yesterday, I tested again positive yesterday for COVID. I did not test today. Uh, I am feeling better today, much better, getting rest. That's the main thing. I just, I can't do anything. I I walk up to the road and get the mail, and by the time I get back, I'm trashed out. I just, I have no strength, no energy. I just feel bad, but I don't, I'm not sick bad. I just feel bad. So, so here's my plan, okay? I'm going to test again tomorrow, okay? Lord willing, I'll test negative tomorrow. And I plan on, well, I'm not going to say that yet. So if I test, depending on the test results tomorrow, that's going to depend on what I do Sunday. According to all of the regulations, the guidelines, uh, I should be okay. It's been over 10 days, and it's been uh, several days, five or six days since I had a fever, longer than that, actually. So according to all of the guidelines, even though I'm still testing positive, I should be okay to go out in public and, you know, to be around people. But be that as it may, this is the way I'm going to play it for right now. So tomorrow, Charlene and I both will probably test uh, again tomorrow. And uh, then uh, I will make an announcement after that. So uh, as of right now, regardless of how the test goes tomorrow, there will be no adult Sunday school tomorrow, or Sunday, no adult Sunday school. Uh, we'll start Sunday school back up when I get back. Uh, youth Sunday school will continue, and youth activities on Wednesday nights, and we'll start Wednesday nights back at church as soon as I get back on Sunday. So whatever Sunday I come back, then we'll start Wednesday nights the, the next week, and we'll pick right back up in the book of Revelation where we left off in our, our study on major end time prophecy. So, so that's where I'm at. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for praying, uh, for your concern for us, even though I've been... It's been a good time, okay? Uh, I, I don't know how to explain it. I, I'm, I'm afraid, but and I was afraid I was going to get all emotional tonight and and uh, talking. It's actually it's been a good time. Uh, I have been, I've just spent quite a bit of time quiet with the Lord, with the Word, uh, piddling around here, you know, doing what little I could. But it's been good. And uh, I highly recommend people that there's just sometimes we just need to slow down. Just slow down and commune with the Lord, okay? I mean, there's, there's nothing like it for the soul. So, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been sick. I haven't felt good, just, but it's been a good time. And uh, I, just, I just feel like the Lord has blessed me in, 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 in several ways and so I just want to encourage you to pray for each other. Continue to pray for Charlene and I, and I'll quit rambling now and uh, get on uh, with the lesson. I'll also, as I said the other day, uh, Sunday morning, whether I'm there or not, there'll be a new, the new calendar for the month will be up on the, uh, there on the table in the church. So you'll be, be able to uh, keep up with that in our prayer list. And again, I just want to encourage you to, pray for each other and encourage each other during these times that we're living in. So uh, let's pray and then we'll talk about the book of Ruth as I, as I announced uh, yesterday. So, Heavenly Father, Lord God, your blessings and your grace. Father, that's all we need. And Lord, we just fall upon you tonight because you are Father God and Lord that you are Regardless of what we see physically, you are watching over us and you do take care of us in our lives. Lord, I've got so many friends right now, so many things right now that I want to pray for and I just want to unburden on you. And 
Father, you know my heart in those circumstances, and I pray that you would just intervene in each one and just be with them. I pray for Mama and Jack right now, Lord, that you would just be with them. And Father, just let your peace just reign supreme and guard over them. And Lord, I pray for Spring Hill that as we move through this time of separation, I know the church is still meeting and going, but I'm separated from them, Father, that you would just watch over us and, and Father, a spirit of peace and unity. Thank you for Brother Steve Newton and the blessing he's been. Lord, I ask you would just continue to bless him. Now lead us in your word, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, tonight I want to talk about, just for a few minutes, it, it, uh, just a, a devotional almost, just a few minutes about the book of Ruth, some things in the book of Ruth. And in particular, the first uh, five or six, seven verses. And it's just a passage as I was uh, doing some reading and some studying the other day. It just really spoke to my heart, and I spent quite a bit of time meditating in it. And the book of Ruth comes at a time in the Bible, the time period, uh, chronologically. And it was a pretty difficult time for Israel. They were in the promised land. But they were having all kinds of problems. And granted, most of the problems they were having were self-inflicted, okay? Their, their idolatry, their refusal to walk wholeheartedly with God, their refusal to worship Him and Him only. And one of the things I want to point out, just a, just a, 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 a word, is one of the things that you really need to see in Ruth even though she was not an Israelite, she was a Moabite, she was an outsider, is she had the heart that God wanted in his people. Okay? Ruth had the kind of heart, the kind of love and desire, not only for God, but for other people that God wanted in his people. When the people of God, the Israelites, looked at the law and looked at the, the ceremonies and all of those things of perfection that God had given them, it should have stirred in them, rather than pride, which is what it did, it should have stirred in them a fear, a reverential fear, and a desire to call out to God and to seek God's help, but they didn't. They went the other way with it, whereas Ruth had the kind of heart, a heart of love, a heart that was, was able to, to feel and to reach out to people, a heart that, that com was compassion, and that's the way that God is toward his people. And so here we find now, during the time, Ruth chapter 1, during the time of the judges, there was a famine in the land. Now, what land was that? The promised land. That's where they are. Matter of fact, look what he says. A man left Bethlehem in Judah with his wife and two sons to stay in the territory of Moab for a while. So they're in the promised land. They're in the land where God told them to go and where God said, I want you to go and I want you to live in this land. I want you to obey me in this land. I want you to prosper in this land. And I will be your provision in this land. And that's where they are. But that first line is so telltale. It says, during the time of the judges, there was a famine in the land. Now, you know enough about the Bible and you've read the book of Judges a time or two and you know that was not a good time. That was some up and down. It was war. It was problems all of the time. But the number one thing that characterized the time of the Judges is if you look back just one page in Judges chapter 21 and verse 25, it's that one verse. In those days, there was no king in Israel and everyone did whatever seemed right to him. That was the problem during the time of the judges. It wasn't so much the famine. It wasn't so much the wars. It was that there was no leadership. There was no king in two ways. Number one, they weren't following the Lord God, the king of kings. 
And number two, they weren't following godly leaders that God had put for them. So he had several of these judges that came along that were decent enough people, were good people, but they, the people wouldn't follow them. They were always rebelling, always going on their own way. And what it wound up was, was that people were doing what was good in their own eyes. They were making their own decisions and going their own way. And offhand, and we're not going to get into this tonight, but somebody would say, well, isn't that what we all want? Isn't that what the United States is about? It's freedom about making our own decisions. Yes, it is. And independence and, and our liberties and our rights. But even in freedoms and liberties and rights, there are constraints. There are laws. There are rules. There is no such thing as absolute freedom. Never has been and never will be. And the freedoms that we choose to live under and the constraints that we choose to live under are those of the Lord God. And in their case, it was the constraints of the promised land and it was the constraints of the law. And God said that if you'll come into my land, Bethlehem in this case, Judah, Israel, the promised land, and live by my ways, my laws, I'll be your provision. And so, but there was a famine in the time of the land. And rather than follow the king, the Lord God Almighty, they chose to go somewhere else. Now, I found this, it, it, it's, it's almost like a play on words, okay? The way that the Holy Spirit wrote this. During the time of Judges, there was a famine in the land, okay? That means there was no bread. There was nothing to eat. A man left Bethlehem in Judah with his wife. You know what the word Bethlehem means? What the, the town of Bethlehem, you know what it means? House of bread. So they're in a time of famine, in the land of provision, in the house of bread, but there is no bread. But this is where they're supposed to be. So it says they left the house of bread, because there was no bread. They left the house and they went to another land, a foreign land, matter of fact, even an enemy land to a lot of extent, to find bread. And this is what seemed right to them to do. So rather than following God's word, Rather than following God's provision, they decide what is right. Look at verse 15 of chapter 1. Uh, chapter, uh, Judges 21, 15 again. I'm sorry. In those days, there was no king in Israel, so everyone did whatever seemed right to him. And to Elimelech, this is what seemed right, that he would leave the house of provision, he would leave the house of bread, and he would go to Moab. Now, just real quick about Moab. These people, Moab, they were descended from Lot. You remember Lot was Abraham's nephew. If you go back into Genesis chapter 19, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot and his two daughters were the only two that were saved out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And after they got out and they were hiding there in the mountains in the, in the countryside, Lot's daughters got to talking and they thought they were the only people left on earth because everything else that they knew had been destroyed. So they got their father drunk. They were impregnated by Lot and they each had a son and the oldest had a son named Moab. And that's where these Moabites came from. That's who Ruth is descended from. And that's where they decided to go. And the way the scripture says it again, I, the Holy Spirit is so precise the names, verse 2, the man's name was Elimelech, and his wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion, and they were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. And they entered the fields of Moab and settled there. They settled down in a foreign country. They're not in the house of provision anymore. They're not in the house where God told them to be anymore. Now they've gone where it seemed best to them, and they've settled down. Now, even though they're in this other place and there may be bread there, these people are not God's people. These people are not the people of God's covenant, and these people are not the people of God's provision. And yet that's where we find them, and that's where they're settled. 
I want to share a couple of things. The Bible says this in Psalm 37, 16. It says, the little that the righteous person has is better than the abundance of many wicked people. So when you read a passage like this, and when you think about things like this, this ought to come across your mind. Is it better for me to have less and be right with God or to have more and to be right with the world? Is it better for me to serve God and maybe not have a lot of the provisions that everybody else has or not have all of the niceties and things of that nature, but yet be right with God and know that I'm in God's provision and know that God's watching over me. And somebody would automatically point up and say, well, there wasn't any bread. So apparently God wasn't watching over them. Well, Proverbs chapter 15 says, All the days of the oppressed are miserable, but a cheerful heart has a continual feast. Better a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with turmoil. So folks, sometimes we have to make choices. And that's exactly what Elimelech did with Naomi and his family here. They made choices. And their choice was to leave the place of provision that God had given them. Their choice was to walk out from under the promise of God and go somewhere else that seemed better to them. And that's what the word tells us. Now, even though, and I cannot argue with you one bit, in the house of bread, the Bible says there was a famine. There was no bread. Now, I don't know to what extent, but it was bad enough, okay? It was a famine. Nobody wants to be hungry. Everybody wants to eat. But they chose to leave the place where God said, you stay here and I'll provide for you. This is your land of promise. So when they got to Moab and they settled, verse 3, Naomi's husband, Elimelech, died, and she was left with her two sons. Pretty telling, if you ask me. Her sons took Moabite women as their wives. One was named Orpha. The second was named Ruth. After they lived in Moab about 10 years, both Malon and Chilion also died, and the woman was left without her two children and without her husband. Now, when we skip ahead in the story, and we can because we have the book. God has told us what's going to happen we see how the story could have turned out, okay? They could have stayed in Bethlehem. They could have stayed in the house of bread, God's provision, and notice verse 6 now of chapter 1. She and her daughters-in-law set out to return for the territory, to return from the territory of Moab, because she had heard in Moab that the Lord had paid attention to his people's need by providing bread for them. Amen. Didn't the Lord say that this was his place of provision? This is the house of bread? So when it came time, the Lord provided bread for his people. Now notice something else. This is, this is important. It says that because she had heard in Moab that the Lord had paid attention. Somebody had to tell her. Do you see that? She was out of fellowship. She was out of the place of the Lord, out of the, the land of provision of God. So she didn't know. Somebody had to tell her. So when we walk out from under God's provision, when we walk out of those places where God has told us to be and what God has told us to do, we walk out from under that fellowship, that protection of God. Folks, that's just a simple fact of Scripture. And after reading these verses, especially 4 and 5, I cannot help but wonder, had they stayed in Bethlehem where they should have, under God's provision, would Elimelech and the two boys still be alive? Now, granted, that, that that's 
pure conjecture. I, I cannot answer that question because Scripture doesn't know, doesn't tell us. But, but to me, that's almost the implication that had they stayed there, they would have all lived because God provided bread for them. God provided what he had promised. Now, where should they have been all of this time? They should have been in Bethlehem, in the house of bread, in the house of provision. They should never have gone to Moab. They should have never done what right, what seemed right in their own eyes, but done what the Lord said. They should have followed his ways. Would they have suffered had they stayed in Bethlehem? Obviously, they would have. According to the text, there was a famine. They probably would have suffered days of hunger. There may have been some disease. There may have been some sickness. They would have. But they would have been where God told them to be. And they would have been under God's hand of provision. And as you see in verse 6, true to his word, God provided for them. So, folks, we have a choice. Now, tomorrow night, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit more applicable to our day right now. But we have a choice we have to make. And our choice is whether, just as they are during the time of the judges, everybody was doing what was right in his own eyes. Are you going to do what's right in your own eyes? Are you going to do what you think is best? Or are you going to live by the word of God and allow God to guide us and be our provision? So let me give you a couple of things here to consider. And uh, then I'll, I'll close for tonight. So I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I've messed this up. I'm, I'm just kind of... Let me consider a couple of things. Number one, when they left Judah... When they left Bethlehem, they left their provision. It's that simple. That's what the scripture tells us. Again, I'll belabor these points, but these points need to be, you need to get them in your head. Bethlehem was the house of bread. Bethlehem was where God had said, this is where my provision will be for you. Now, I know right now there's a famine here. I know it looks like there's nothing here, but this is the place. And God did not tell them to leave. They left on their own accord. Number two, verses one through three, the men died. Not only now have they lost their source of provision in the land because they're not in the land anymore. Now they're in Moab, but now they have lost their physical provision, their physical source of provision. Back in these days, for a woman, for women to be a, a widow, to be on their own was terrible. It, it wasn't like it is today. You didn't run down to the store. You didn't have meals on wheels and all of these things. There were people that helped, but it wasn't like it is today. And this was terrible for them. And now not only was she out from under God's provision, she had lost her physical source of provision because she had left God's place of provision. So number three, and what I want to share with you, number three is Matthew chapter 633, my life verse. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And what I want you to think about in Matthew chapter six and verse 33 is this. Listen to what he says, because this is, this is so powerful. Therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink or, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and body more than clothing? Consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe the wildflowers of the field, how they grow. They don't labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you? You of little faith. So don't worry saying what we will eat or what will we drink or what will we wear. 
for the Gentiles, or the Moabites, in keeping with our text, for the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow because you will worry, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Don't walk out from under God's provision. Even when it looks like there is no bread in the house of bread, God has said, this is my place of provision for you. I will provide. Thank you. And uh, God bless you. Keep praying. And uh, the Lord God will bless us because we are his servants and his people. And he will watch over us. I love each and every one of you. I'm so looking forward to getting back to church, getting back with the people of God. God bless you and thank you.